Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Gaden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. We thank you guys very, very much for being a part of our family, for being a part of our wooly and wild little endeavor out here in the jungle. And we are the people who believe what, gentlemen? We, we believe the laws of the creators of our creator, of Yahuwah, that is his name, it is not God, it is not Lord. His name is Yahuwah because God and Lord are titles. We believe that his commands are still around to this day. His Torah, which is the first type of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, they are not gone, that they were never done away with. We also believe that his son's name is Yahoshua, it is not Jesus because he was a Hebrew man, there were no J's in, back then, and we believe that he has died for sins. That's right. All right. And so, gentlemen, how are you guys? Everyone good? Good. Okay. So, uh, an update for me, for anybody who's, um, I know a lot of you guys are out there asking about it, not even asking, but like giving me well wishes, which I really, really appreciate is, um, I think I got about 30% of my vision left and, um, I've actually gone through this before to where I lost my vision almost a hundred percent. And, um, we know what it is and, uh, we know how to deal with it. I think, and so we are attempting to deal with it right now as we uh, um, make changes in dietary lives that will do things that will make things better. And so um, we're struggling today. So if I miss words, I'm really, really sorry. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to read this as much as I can until I can't read anymore. And then um, we'll have to call it for a while until I can't see. This is Yah's scriptures, guys. This is um, one of the greatest things I've ever had the privilege to touch, to be a part of. And it is something that is a, it's something that the prisoners in the United States are very much looking forward to. And we have contacted and we have been in contact and we write a lot of brothers and I'm not going to, they're prisoners, but they're brothers. They're, uh, they're definitely prisoners by the United States standards, but they are brothers by Yah's standards and the people in jail, the people in prison need to be ministered to, they need to be taken care of, and we as a people, I guess we as a people, I guess is, is we aren't in this, but there's a lot of people out there who have said they have prison ministries, and when you look at it, and when you look at the fruits of it, there's nothing there, and it's not bearing any kind of fruit, and the greatest field of opportunity that anybody would ever have is inside of a prison system. If you are looking to touch people, if you are looking to Help them if you are looking for an opportunity when they're going to accept most what they get. And again, they won't accept most of what they get, but they will be more receptive than when they are usually in the streets and they're grind doing what they are doing. And so we have an opportunity that these guys, when they are in incarceration, that we can minister to them. And this is what the scriptures is all about. And this is why we have the scriptures and everyone who purchases the scriptures is a, we're able to get one full scriptures into the prisons. Now these will be in your guys' hands in the middle of June. They will be to us June 1st. We have our dummy copy that is, um, it's actually not scriptures, but it looks just like it. Um, it will be here very, very soon. We'll put this up on video and show everybody what it looks like. Um, it's 103 books, guys. It's 14.5 font. It was for people like myself who can't see. Um, and any chance of seeing very soon will come to something like this. So, guys, this is available, um, $70. You guys, get your pre-orders in if you will. We'd appreciate it, and we are doing everything we can for our brothers and sisters in chains. You guys can download this absolutely free of charge. It is a free PDF. You guys can grab it. Um, send it in email. Send it to everybody you know. It is, again, one of the greatest English translations that is out there because the name of our Creator and the name of the Son have been fully restored. Along with all of our forefathers, along with all of this, and there's also a, uh, there's Mac versions of this all available, eSword is all available, and this is the Amazon, these are the, you can get these on Amazon right now, and um, some books that people that we're doing right now, uh, that Eli's doing, I read my scriptures, is Adam and Eve, uh, the first book of Adam and Kawa, and there have been a lot of these books that went out this month, um, it is one, it is a great, great book, all of these books are fascinating, they're, all of these are tremendous, all of these are um additions to scriptures and every one of these books back scriptures up there's nothing i've ever found in any one of these books that ever goes against scriptures in fact it it basically um it's a, it's other details it's things that we wouldn't know and it's available right now and every one of the prophets that go from this on amazon also go into our brothers in chains we're also looking for anybody who wants to do a a donation to getting these particular books 
into the prison. We still have, we still want to send a grip of them into them. Uh, if anybody wants to do that and help facilitate that, uh, I will help facilitate that if you will do the uh, donation part. JBOSS008 at gmail.com is where you can get a hold of me. And we have lists of guys right now that we would like to get these books to. So they're just waiting on people who are willing to help. Okay, <clears throat> gentlemen, let us go over what happened in uh, 2 Shemuel um, 10 and before and all where we're at, Jade. Um, and let's go from there. Kate, will you please take him to the water? Dar became king. He's got the Ark of the Covenant back. He went and found Jonathan's son, who was his best friend's son, and brought him to his table to eat forever. Uh, he going into war a lot. He's, his life is just filled with wars. Like, it never ends for him. He fights till the day of his death. He um, went and sent uh, messengers to console one of his um Old friends, which were from another land, is his, his. His he died, and his son took over his place. He sent men to messenger for messengers to protect him and to uh, comfort him. And he sent them back and dishonored them. He cut their beards off, cut their clothes, and sent them back naked. And uh, not naked, well, almost naked. Almost naked. Yep. And Doe is saw that is that it's disrespectful. And they went to war, and Joab and uh, Bishai, they went and destroyed them, and they tried to get the Armenians to help them, and the Armenians got slaughtered again. They lost another war. Yeah, I guess it's one thing to get beat up and people, like, take your clothes. Another thing, they shave your beard. That's not good. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, so here we are. Glasses on. Let's see if we can do this. And it came to be at the turn of the year, at the time sovereigns go out, that Dawid sent Joab and his servants with him and all Yisrael, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But Dawid remained at Jerusalem. And it came to be at evening time that Dawid rose up from his bed and walked about on the roof of the sovereign's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very good to look at. Now, um, I'm not, I, I don't have the best of eyes. In fact, I don't think I have really good eyes at all. Um, but here's the thing is, we, I, we've discussed this as a family before, this entire um, being able to observe a woman showering from a long distance is... Um, I don't know if that shower is going to be more of a tub with filled with water. Maybe a tub, maybe something, but I mean, we're, we've, we've talked about this before. Do you think David had like really good eyesight? Um, is there the something else about this? So yeah, telescope. Uh, like his next door neighbor, he looks over. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe maybe it's really close. I mean, like they maybe they bathe on the roof there, and yeah, in those days or something. Maybe they bathe on the roof, but I mean, even then, you would have to be really close. You think da Dawid was a sovereign, right? Mm -hmm. This dude's a sovereign. He's going to be up in his own little uh, castle, his own little uh, place. It's not going to be near the rest of the peasants, right? You're not going to pull up a house right next to the place. Well, you're right. It was one of the like the uh, one of the, like the soldiers. Maybe it was near. Maybe he lived near the palace. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Either I had really good eyesight or something else is going on. Let's continue. Uh, yeah, binoculars back in the day. Okay. And we've discussed this as a family before, so these are just interesting things to discuss. Three. And Dawid sent and asked about the woman. And one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Kittite? And Dawid sent messengers to fetch her. And she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansing herself from her uncleanness. And she returned to her house. Um, this is boss clan. We got to discuss all this. Uh, this is the this is the kind of stuff that we discuss. So, um, so Dawid knew that she was married. He knew she was married. Um, she probably told him, um, "I can't get with you. I'm in my uh, uncleanness." And um, for people that don't, you guys probably have zero idea. But like right after this happens is when women become the most fertile. Like this is this is if you want to have a baby. This is the time, right? That is the right after the cycling and all this stuff. So this is news to you guys. Is this, right. is this brand new news to you guys? No. You knew this? Yeah, you told us. Oh, okay. All right. So here we have Dave this. Dave is making terrible decisions. Yeah, so he, so not only, so he, um, he broke one commandment, right? He's about to break one commandment, but he's also, he broke, uh, he's about to break two. Um, uh, he's, he became an adulterer here, and he knew it. He like he willingly did it, right? He could have any woman land. He became. And, like chose another man's wife. Yeah. Well, there you go. So here we go. Five. And the woman conceived and sent and informed Dawid and said, I am pregnant. Then Dawid sent to Joab, send Uriah the Kittite to me. And Joab sent Uriah to Dawid. And Uriah came to him and Dawid asked how Joab was doing and how the people were doing and how the fighting was going. And Dawid said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. And Uriah went out from the sovereign's house and a gift from the sovereign followed him. 
What do you guys think the gift from the sovereign was? I don't know. Something. I don't know. Something. Probably something nice. Important gold, no, maybe. Horse, and the sense. gift from the sovereign followed him. And so, uh, what do we make of that? Is uh, well, it's something they wouldn't have, maybe like gold or something, some riches. A horse. A horse. Did he send it. Yeah. Did he, what do you? What do you do? Is there's a couple people following Uriah home? Yeah, maybe. Trying to. Okay. Nine. But Uriah lay down at the door of the sovereign's house with all the servants of his master and did not go down to his house. And they informed Dawid, saying, Uriah did not go down to his house. So Dawid said to Uriah, Did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? So um, there's all sorts of bad things that are happening here. Um, not, you know, there's, there's, there's deceit. There's, uh, there's just, there's a ruse. This guy's setting up a ruse. You know, and this is, you know, to this point, we didn't know anything like this about Dawid, right? To this point, we didn't know he had the capabilities of doing this kind of great evil. Um, you could say for the love of a woman, or you could say for the lust of a woman, or you could say whatever. But he, up until this point, we know him as a Torah keeper, right? Um, right here, he's a Torah breaker. And not only is he a Torah breaker, man, he's a real Torah breaker. Continues on. A house wrecker now. Yeah, he's a house wrecker, Torah breaker, all sorts of things. I mean... It's going to get worse. Um, 11. 10? 11. Okay. And Uriah said to Dawid, The ark in Yisrael and Yahud are dwelling in booths. And my master Yoab and the servants of my master are encamped in the open fields. And I, should I go to my house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? As you live and as your being lives, let me not do this. And Dawid said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I let you go. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that next day. So Dawid's like, ah, oh, man, this dude is like very loyal. And of all the people, he found the dude that was this loyal. 13, and Dawid called him and he ate and drank before him and he made him drunk. And at evening, he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his master, but he did not go down to his house. And it came to be in the morning that Dawid wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, put Uriah in the front of the heaviest battle and you shall turn away from him and he shall be smitten and die. Can you imagine that? You guys have a letter in your hand that is actually your death sentence. Yeah. And you carry, you carry your own death sentence and back. he's so loyal, he didn't read the letter. For the loyalty of this dude, for the loyalty of all this stuff, and then uh, it's just not, it's not good. Okay. Um, yeah, he just like, he, he just trusts always he's not going to read the letter, you know? If he read the letter, he could have got himself out of there and freed himself. It's probably sealed. I, I would imagine it was sealed like a, a signet thing that when they got it, he would have to break the seal, I would guess. I don't know. Uh, 16? Yes. And it came to be as Joab watched the city that he appointed Uriah to the place where he knew there were brave men. And the men of the city came out and fought with Joab, and some of the people of the servants of Dawid fell. And Uriah the Kittite also died. I think Uriah thought this was a little weird. He uh, he's in one position in the army. He probably um, realized it was a betrayal. Yeah. Comes back and then all of a sudden he's stuck at the very front of this thing. Sounds a little grim. Okay, and Joab sent and reported to Dawid all the events of the battle and commanded the messenger, saying, "When you have finished reporting all the events of the battle to the sovereign, then it shall be if the sovereign's wrath rises and he says to you, Why did you go so near to the city when they when you fought? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote smote Ablamech? the son of Yerubetsheth. Was it not a woman who threw an upper millstone on him from the wall so that he died in Tibet's? Why did you go near the wall? Then you shall say, your servant Uriah, the Kittite, is also dead. So, like, Yoab was very, like, I don't know, he knew. Like, Yo Yoab didn't question. Yoab just follows over. Like, yes, he's, he's, he's Yoab's like, a mad sinner himself. Yeah, Yoab's, Yoab's, the, Yoab's a crazy guy who goes and kills people after they've been pardoned by the king. So, he, uh, he, does, he doesn't question this stuff, but he should have been like, yeah, we can't kill him and man, Uriah did nothing. Yeah, well, oh, it's... This is team of mad sinners right now. Yeah, mad sinners. 22, and the messenger went and came and reported to Dawid all with which Joab had sent him. And the messenger said to Dawid, the men have been mighty against us and came out to us in the field, but we drove them back as far as the entrance of the gate. And the archers shot from the wall at your servants, and some of the servants, sovereign servants are dead. And your servant Uriah, the Kittite, is also dead. And Dawid said to the messenger, say to Joab, do not let this matter be evil in your eyes, for the sword devours one as well as another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it, and encourage him. And the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, and she lamented for her husband. And when her mourning was over, David's Dawid sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the deed that Dawid had done was evil 
in the eyes of Yahoo. Let's give him the eyes of anyone. Yeah, well, here we go. Um, so he uh, he's up for murder. Um, he is up for doing evil against your neighbor, right? One of the commandments is don't do evil don't against endanger your, your neighbor's yeah, life. Yeah, don't endanger your neighbor's life. So he broke that commandment. Um, he bro- adult, he's your, an adulterer. Don't cover your uh, wife. He went into a woman with her own cleanness. Um, what else? What else did David the Torah breaker just break? I mean, uh, this is a big one. Lust, you know? Like, what well, lust? I mean, but we don't. Do we have a lust life? command? I mean, it started with lust. Yeah, but I mean, is there a command not to lust? I mean, uh, you hug your neighbor's wife. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what else? I don't know. Anything else? I don't know. Was murder? That kind of see how it's murder. He's a murder. Yeah, it's definitely murder. I mean, it, that would be in, in the states. That would be. Uh, I mean, he would get first degree murder, probably, maybe second degree, because he didn't actually do it. But more than likely, because he called the hit out, it would be first first degree. And the crazy thing is, after he he takes her away, like she laments, and she probably has no idea that he he's oh he just died in battle, but I would like kill this guy. Dude, I don't think she's. I I think she's got uh, it. Yeah, she, she's got to figure she it out. To she's known. pregnant, dude. She's tripping. You know what had happened? She would be burned. She and David would be burned outside the city gates for adultery. That is what the commandment is, right? So when she finds out, when David finds out, or when everybody finds out what they had done, I mean, the, the, they should have been killed. I mean, that's the, that's the Torah for the, the sins that they did um, with adultery inside of Yisrael. So there we go. Um, King David was spared, and that should give all of us great um, feelings that, hey, because we've, we've all gone some, some pretty rough roads. I mean, I don't think there's one of us... Um, that have you know could say that you just lived a good life, right? And I mean, it's it's according to the Torah, we all come up short, we all fall, and this is why we have a Torah just like this, so that we know right from wrong. We know, okay, if we're gonna go do this crime, we're gonna be breaking about five commandments right here. One commandment's a big deal. Five, it just is is it's just tremendous. So, guys, with that. Um, it's time to seek our creator. It's time to obey him. It's time to get into obedience with him and do what he wants, when he wants, not when we want. So guys, with that, have a wonderful day. We are out. All right, All right. shalom. shalom.